When the weather gets really wet and cold, you wouldn't come out riding in your jersey and your shorts, would you? Thanks. You'd make sure you're properly protected. That's better. <laughs> but what about your bike? What would you do to actually winterize or look after your bike in the winter? Most of us will only think about putting a mudguard on. But here's a rundown of our list of the top 10 ways of winterizing your bike. So what's the most annoying part of your bike to clean? Well, after the spokes is probably the back of your forks. This intricate web that we find on most forks here is an absolute nightmare when it comes to getting covered in mud. So what's the simplest thing you can do? Well, you can tape it up. You can cover this up with either tape or even just the stickers you might have in the bottom of your toolbox to make sure that no mud gets stuck in this part. Okay, another really simple tip is to check your brake pads and change them over. Winter's not the time for organic brake pads. That's the time for us to get sintered in there. Sintered brake pads, the metallic ones, tend to last a heck of a lot longer in wet and gritty conditions. But same as anything, whenever you fit new brake pads, make sure you bed them in properly. So obviously what we're talking about there is taking your bike and riding down a nice safe piece of road and apply those brakes nice and hard both at the same time and do that about 15 to 20 times just to make sure that you get some of that heat into those pads. That will make them last a lot longer through the winter. Sticking with your brake pads, wet and muddy riding can eat through them quicker than anything else. Um, but there's a real simple thing you can do. You can make a little disc brake cover that will stop all that mud and gunk from dropping down into the brake pads and wear them, wearing them out. The best thing about it is it will literally cost you beans. So how do you go about doing it? Well, first of all, get yourself some beans. Obviously do this at dinner time, so you can actually have a nice little munch if you want to. Mm. Whatever variety of beans you go for, make sure you go for one with a ring pull. This will make the next step easier, because this is the important bit. So the first thing you want to do is you want to measure the gap at the back of the caliper here, so where the brake pads fit. So once you've got that measured out, then you can make yourself a little cardboard template. So this will be the, the main shape of that disc brake cover. When you do that, when you cut it out of cardboard, make sure you've got two little tabs. So these are the tabs that are gonna go through the pin on the brake, pad, brake pads to make sure that it stays in place. So I've obviously measured that out first of all. Then, first things first, these things are sharp, so it's important to wear some gloves before you do it. Take your template, and what you're going to do is you're going to draw around the template on your bean tin, like so. What you want to do is take some, either some tin snips or a decent pair of scissors will do it. Make sure you don't use your best ones from home. And once you've cut out the shape, you should end up with the same as you've done before, just made out of metal. Now, as you can see, I've drilled two holes in this. So again, do this very, very carefully. These holes should be the same size or just a little bit bigger than the pin that goes through the brake pads. Use a file then to file everything nice and smooth. And then what you can do is you want to fold these over. So you can use pliers or obviously if you've got gloves on, use your fingers. And then this will fit neatly between the pin and the pads to hold everything up. So just like in all the best Blue Peter ones, I've made one earlier on the back of the bike, so we can see that now. So when you finish the job, take yourself somewhere nice and quiet, give yourself a pat on the back, and let all of that gas out. Mmm, <laughs> beans. Tape and stickers are also a good way of blanking up the bottom of your steerer tube. This big hole here can obviously allow a lot of mud and water to actually come up through and start rusting parts inside your frame. So if you blank it off with stickers, then obviously that will stop that from happening. Just make sure that every now and again, so every couple of weeks, 
take off those stickers to make sure that there's no mud or water that actually underneath there. And then just repeat it all through the winter. A simple way of looking after your precious dropper post is using a, a bit of an old inner tube. It's a real simple thing to do. So just chop a small bit of inner tube off and what you're gonna do is put this over as a, a bit of a gator. So slide it down. This can take a while and use it to protect the innards over the winter. Now, obviously this is a little bit loose at the top. So what you can use, use a zip tie around the top, making sure that you put the zip tie high up so it doesn't actually damage the internals if you drop the seat post all the way. It might sound obvious, but changing your tyres to get ready for winter is, is a perfect thing to do. It's time to ditch that shallow summer tread tyre that you've been using all the time. And now the trails are getting really boggy and muddy. It's time to go for something with a much more aggressive, deep tread. This Vittoria motor is a perfect example of what makes a good mud tyre. Big, chunky knobs, plenty of space in between them. So you get plenty of grip when everything is really, really boggy. A little tip we've stolen from the pros on the EWS circuit or downhill circuit is the use of grip tape. So the stuff you normally find on a skateboard or a scooter is perfect for putting on your gear levers or your brake levers to give you extra grip when everything's really soggy and wet. The great thing is it's sticky back so you can cut it into whatever shape you need for your levers and just stick it in place. Super easy and a very, very quick tip. You can't talk about winterizing your bike without talking about mud guards. They're super cheap and if you go for something like these little flexible plastic ones, they do a great job of keeping your vision clean, but also protecting your forks, so protecting the seals and also protecting the steerer tube as well. Um, but if you're a little bit too cheap, even for something like this, you can make your own one very, very simply. All you need is the packaging from a tire. What we find the best is the packaging from a Continental tyre actually. This is similar plastic to you find from these mud guards. And so what you're going to do is effectively just cut this into a shape similar to one of these and make it into a mud guard. It's really easy, really quick. And whereas once you were going to just throw this in the bin, you can make it into something that will keep on your bike for a while. So once you've cut your, your basic shape out, what you want to make sure of is you want to make sure you've punched some holes into it to put some zip ties to keep it in place. So obviously you're going to punch two sets up the top to keep it next to the fork brace and also two either side here to keep it onto the legs. Obviously if you don't want your friends to know you're such a cheapskate, what you can then do is cover it in stickers to make it look like a proper mud guard. But there you go, a real simple way of making an easy mud guard for your forks. In winter it's time to ditch the lightweight dry lube and to go for a heavyweight wet lube instead. This is designed to withstand constant drenchings and to keep your drivetrain working smoothly throughout the winter. Make sure you first of all degrease that drivetrain though to make sure that you get no more of that horrible gunky black stuff that can happen when you've got a dirty chain. When you've done that, reapply wet lube before every couple of rides or even every ride and when it's really bad you might even want to carry a little tube of wet lube with you in your pack so you can reapply it after it's been washed off. Okay it's a fact of life that cables rub frames. It doesn't take winter to do that but when you add in the grit and mud of winter any form of cable rub will be accentuated that much more. So the important thing here is to protect your frame as much as possible. So you can use proper stickers designed to do the job or even just a little bit of tape to make sure that you're covering all of the areas where a cable can actually rub against the frame. So obviously look towards the head tube, this is the obvious place, but make sure you check those points around either the bottom bracket area or even around that rear derailleur or rear brake to make sure that you've covered everything. That way you can peel those stickers off after a while and your frame should look as good as new. 
So there you have it, 10 simple ways of protecting your bike for this coming winter. Make sure to subscribe for other videos like this. And if you have any of your own hints or tips for looking after your bike during the winter, feel free to put them in the comments below.